A disturbing report from the Anti-Defamation League finds anti-Semitic incidents have reached historic highs across the U.S. The ADL says more than 2,700 incidents targeting American Jews were recorded last year. That marks the highest total since it began tracking such data in 1979. The Midwest chapter of the ADL, which focuses on Illinois, Indiana, Minnesota, the Dakotas, and Wisconsin, reported a total of 175 anti-Semitic incidents in 2021. That's up 62% from the 108 cases it recorded the year before and more than 200% higher than five years ago. Joining us now to talk about this rising tide of anti-Semitism are David Goldenberg, Midwest Regional Director of the Anti-Defamation League, and Erez Cohen, Executive Director of Illini Hillel at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Thank you to you both for joining us. David Goldenberg, let's start with you first, please. Obviously, these numbers uh, that have been recorded are alarming, uh, but what about those incidents that go unreported? Are you concerned that it's, it's actually higher? We're obviously concerned because we always want to have an accurate number. We know from the FBI that roughly 40% of all hate crimes go unreported. But one of the things that I think is important that while this number is actually probably lower than the actual number, we think that the trends in general are, are accurate. So while we've seen the year over year increases in the dramatic way, in Illinois, we've seen a 430% increase in anti-Semitic incidents over the last five years. So we think that trend is very real, even if the percentage is high. David, what do you think is driving the surge? So I think there's three big things. Number one, first and foremost, the spread of hate and anti-Semitism and misinformation on social media. Number two, I think the loss of civil discourse that we've seen over the years and the intensity around political debates. Number three, I also think there's just general ignorance out there. And especially over the last couple of years where people were essentially holed up in their homes, they were engaging with fewer and fewer people living on social media. So to the effort needs to be uh, given to be exposed to people who are different than you, who have different ideologies, different religions. And I think that ignorance is driving a, an element of this as well. Eris Cohen, what's been your experience with anti-Semitism at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign? So, so for, the, the, for the past five years, we've seen a, a, a great increase in the number of anti-Semitic incidents. And to the earlier uh, question about reporting, we also know that some of the incidents go unreported. Um, for example, just yesterday, uh, we were dealing with an issue of a student that threw rocks at students that were at Hillel uh, during a, a rally, and we're, we're in constant contact with the police around this topic. Um, and this is these are ongoing issues on our campus. David Cohen, um, you know, as we've seen, the numbers are on the rise in the Midwest, but uh, what has uh, been the law enforcement response uh, to these incidents? Does it seem like the courts are, are prosecuting people for committing them? So, so go for it, Ayers. Uh, no, no, go, David, sorry. Oh, Brandy, who did you want to? <laughs> David, go ahead, please. Why don't you answer that one? Oh, no, sorry. So I think one of the things that we're seeing is that in communities where there are large populations of Jews who have cultivated relationships with law enforcement, they generally have been quite responsive. But in some cases where they're not so experienced in, in, in hate crimes and investigating hate crimes, they've got, all, they've got a long way to go. And Erez, uh, you know, directing a somewhat similar question to you, how has the administration at the university responded uh, to some of these incidents and to this increase in uh, anti-Semitism? So we are in constant working relationship with the university around this. There is obviously a lot of education that needs to happen. And we are really looking at this as an opportunity for, um, for learning, uh, for the university to take more leadership and to support the students in a way that they feel seen and heard and supported. Um, some, some events are better handled than others. And we see, we learn from other universities as well. Uh, Eastern Illinois University gave no trespassing orders to uh, people that threw uh, anti-Semitic flyers on the ground. Indiana University helped put mezuzahs on doors uh, in, in the dorms. We're hoping to see similar um, leadership coming from our administration as well. And Erez, how much do you think the events uh, in Israel and the ongoing conflict with Palestinians seem to drive the anti-Semitism that you see here? 
we definitely see a growing anti-Semitism around the time that uh, things turn to heat up in the Middle East, and uh, uh, specifically anti-Zionist arguments that basically rule out the, the Jewish right for self-determination has become a, a, an engine for anti-Semitism on our campus. It's very concerning, and sometimes it's even university funded, which is unacceptable uh, on the level of students, faculty, and staff that are Jewish and experience this type of bias on a regular basis. David Goldenberg, same question uh, with regards to, you know, what's happening in Israel and uh, what impact, you know, events of the last year have had on uh, the rise that you all have, have analyzed. Absolutely. So during the most recent conflict between Israel and Hamas back in May of last year, we tracked a more than 114% year-over-year increase from May 2021 to compared to May 2020. And so certainly there was a spike that we saw as, as it relates to anti-Semitic incidents tied directly to that conflict. But one of the things that we did have also seen, though, is that it is quickly turning from legitimate critiques of Israel into the targeting of Jewish institutions, Jewish cultural institutions, which in and of itself is an act of anti-Semitism. And then it translates into that rock throwing incident that Eris talked about, it becomes an act of violence. And so American Jews are concerned. David, we've also seen a marked rise in uh, white supremacist sentiment. How much of a factor is that? It, it plays as much of a factor, if perhaps not more, um, as far as the rise of anti-Semitism. But the thing about it, though, is that just in those two questions, you talked about sort of the extreme parts of different political ideologies, and many in American Jews are essentially being squeezed from both sides. You have white supremacist propaganda, the spread of anti-Semitic propaganda as well, and also vandalism and harassment that is driven, because when you look at anti-Semitism, it really is not even at the core of white supremacist ideology, but actually the core of white supremacist ideology. And then on the extreme left, you start seeing a lot of those in the progressive movement that have adopted um, sort of a, an anti-Israel uh, policy approach. And that's okay to be critical of Israel, but when that becomes acts of anti-Semitism, that's when we have a problem. Uh, Erez, what has been, you know, sort of the response of the Jewish community, and, and in particular, you know, the, the students there at, uh, at the university and how they've responded to, to some of these events? So interestingly, we actually see a lot more activity within the Hillel, more students come to Hillel to get involved, but at the same time, they become less and less visibly Jewish on campus. They hide Jewish symbols that they wear. They try not to associate with, with different uh, Jewish uh, student organizations on campus. Uh, so this is, this is a moment in time where the Jewish community is kind of shying away from the public eye, but is uh, coming, coming to Jewish institution for more support. And David, you know, we've got a few seconds left, but, you know, what do you think when you hear something like what Erez just told us? It's heartbreaking. And it's the reality of the American Jewish experience today. And that is for students to think about it, that they're afraid to embrace or concerned about embracing a critically important part of their identity because, out of, because they have concerns that they will be attacked or harassed. That is a huge problem. And okay. so as we think about where we go from here, we've got to realize that that's a reality and it's going to take a whole society approach to deal with it. It's something that ADL will continue to track, I'm sure. Uh, that's where we'll have to leave it. My thanks to David Goldenberg and Eris Cohen for joining us. Thank you. Thanks.